All right, next in our last kind of lightning round talk here, our last 15 minutes, we have, we have two speakers here that are kind of giving a big picture overview, a kind of full perspective. So um, I'm pleased to introduce um, Hanny Alarian, Executive Director of Power System Technology at Kaiso, and also Ann Moore, who is uh, the Industry Principal of Performance Intelligence at Aviva. So um, after 40 years, OSI Soft now is part of uh, Aviva. And our Pi system, traditionally known as data historian, transitioned to data infrastructure and has widely adopted by all different industry around the world because the bottom line is all about data. Of course, power and utility is our biggest industry sector because we have lots and lots of data and the rapid growth of the data. So with the data as the foundation and utility, utility has driven tremendous value to this dynamic and bi-directional energy supply chain. So now I'm going to turn it to my good friend, Hani from California ISO, our customer for over 20 years. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I, uh, oh man, don't want light in my face. Um, so I'm going to move around because I want you to read the slide because I'm not going to read it for you. Also, I'm going to take my time so nobody can ask me questions at the end. Um, but um, I will be at the maestro if you want. All the questions, I'll answer it. So um, Cal ISO used to be just a market, and I want you to know we're no longer that. We actually an ISO plus a balancing authority. Uh, reliability coordinator of the West, and we have been expanding the uh, energy imbalance market. So we're actually growing a little bit on the West. We doubled our size from 50,000 megawatt as a balancing authority. We're over 120 uh, and growing. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, uh, the electric industry, you know most of this stuff already. But the important part is that we are seeing, seeing 5,700 megawatt of wind generation. This is not a capacity, this is a demand. This is a total wind generation at a moment in time. It was sitting at 5,700 megawatt. We're talking 10,000 or more of wind. Uh, we saw 13,205 if you want it. It changes every day. <laughs> we hit new solar peaks uh, a lot. So that's 13,000 megawatt. We were hitting at 95% renewable at a moment in time. So look at it. That was on, uh, in April. I think uh, we didn't hit it yet again, but we will hit a new one. So what that really means is we're heavily into renewable. And that is creating challenges. Um, photovoltaic, I call them rooftops, uh, behind the meter, same term. We have over 10,000 megawatt. That's a capacity, by the way. We have no idea how much we have. <laughs> Uh, the reason is we just collect whatever people got rebound, you know, uh, rebate on their solar rooftop. We add the numbers and they end up with something big. We don't know if they're maintaining it or not. We do know when we have rain or cloud, our load picks up. So we know that it's definitely five, six, seven thousand of demand. Um, storage device is an important piece, but we don't have uh, a lot of storage device. Uh, but we're moving fast. <laughs> we were, uh, I think, 1,000 uh, a year ago. We're sitting 2,000, probably three, four thousand 4,000 in the next year or two. So we grew fast. We're planning to grow fast, and we want that one. The other part that I want you to be aware of is just three, four, five years ago, we have less than 1,000 megawatt of solar. We had about 4,000 megawatt of wind, but solar was not moving. And all of a sudden, the solar is moving up so fast. So the most important part is capacity. I'm going to test and tell you about our challenges. If I don't have a capacity, what are we going to do at night? If the solar dies, the cloud comes in, the wind dies. So these kind of things are challenges that I know somebody in this room is going to be my solution <laughs> and is going to actually solve these kind of problems. And that's what we need. We have uh, the wind can die, uh, the, the, the rain. When it rains, that solar actually doesn't do a good job. But after the rain is done, we get more solar because they're clean. 
Uh, so ramp capability is another important piece. We've had solar that picks up, and it's predictable, but of course you got the error, right? <laughs> it goes like this, and it comes down like that. And when it's coming down, our load is picking up. So we got little problem between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. Very hard to predict, very hard to figure out which way it's going, and I need my capacity during that time. The last solar eclipse was a few years ago. We're going to have a new one, so I gave you those dates. You can enjoy them. Be ready for that day. We lose a few thousand megawatt, believe it or not. When you have 13,000 megawatt, the last time when this happened, I think we were sitting at maybe five or 6,000. We're going to be sitting at 14, 15, 16,000. And that solar, when it comes, it just dives, and then it comes back. I need capacity to fill that gap. So this gives you an example. This is an old example. I intentionally put it old. This is like 2012, 13. And just look at what happened to the wind when our wind was 1,300. So at least that gives you an idea of what happened when I'm sitting at 5,700. Uh, and we got that kind of a day. Very volatile. And we have to balance the grid. Um, Talk about demand response. Really uh, mentioned, I, I, I love this conference because everybody talks about the same challenges we have, which is we used to just have a load and we just get generation to follow the load and that was the easy part. We thought it was tough. I wish we can go to those days, they're gone. Now I have renewable that does whatever it feels like. Solar and wind, it's like the weather, right? And then I have load that does whatever it wants. And then we have demand response that I can control, but not all the time. And when I control, I not always get exactly what I want. And in the end, we have to balance the grid. The last thing we want to do is load shed. And we all understand. If I can't balance, the last resort I do is load shed. We did the load shed not last year, the year before. Nobody likes it. Politicians don't like it. Everybody says, why didn't you fix it? He says, hey, give me a few billion dollars, and I'll have that extra, you know, 1,000 megawatts sitting outside all year to do nothing with but to call you when this happens once every 100 years or once every 10 years. But the weather has changed. It's not happening every 100 years or every 10 years. It's happening almost every time. It's interesting, the last three fire we had, the first one that happened is, is this is the biggest fire we've ever had, record. I said, wow, okay. I guess it happens once every 100 years. The next one happened, it says, that is the biggest one. And then the next one that happened, it says, that, that is the big one. So that tells you we've had the biggest ones three times in a row in about a year. So things have changed tremendously. This is an example that just gives you a combination of everything. This is what operators have to deal with. I got solar that is moving up, and you can see the pattern. If you have a little bit of cloud <laughs> or some kind of a overcast or rain, that changes the picture. You see the wind in green, the yellow is the solar. And as you can tell, we got a lot of movement around. In the end, I have to maintain my ACE, uh, area correction error. I have to balance. It doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. In the end, as a control area, I have to balance. Not only that, but with an RC, I have to balance. I have to make sure every one of those four entities have to balance. So this is getting it a little bit more, and we have to think a little bit different. Uh, my AGC, automatic generation control, needs to be modified. It has to take into account a lot of different things. Adaptive AGC control is no longer the best solution, but we're doing it. We have to go predictive AGC, so we have a lot of things that we have to think about and look at. So the nice thing, not all everything is a problem. Obviously, sometimes you have opportunities, right? I have diversity in geography, and that gives you capability that sometimes helps in some area. When the sun shines in Arizona, it might not go away in California and so on. So the weather is a little bit, hopefully, it's not all over. Hopefully, we don't have heat wave across the whole country. <laughs> so, but we do have heat waves that actually affect us. Sometimes it's in the north. Sometimes it's in the south. Uh, if I have a fire under some uh, big transmission line, we have to redispatch differently. Those kind of things help. Um, 
Fuel is an issue. Uh, we don't have it on the West as much uh, in freezing, but we do have our own challenges because even though when Texas have major issue with the gas, guess what? We have issue, even we got nothing to do with it. We didn't have freeze, but then all the gas was, was going away and power plant says, I'm, I'm out of gas. I can't get the gas tomorrow, I'm done. So you gotta find another solution. So now all of a sudden we have to understand the challenges with the gas industry, We've been tracking them and working with them for the last five years or more. So it's, not, it's no longer just follow the grid. I got to deal with everything uh, and everybody. <laughs> um, so what is required in the future? I've heard a lot of good stuff. I got to have data. Garbage in, garbage out. I got to have accurate data. You give me bad data, it's useless. I have to have it timely. It has to be fast. It has to keep coming. I have to know if this data is good or suspect or stale or quit updating. I have to have, uh, it have to be responsive. I asked for demand response, it needs to go. I asked for a storage device to go up and down, it needs to go. It has to be intuitive because operator is no longer just chasing one load. They have so many things to look at, and they cannot just sit and look at something for 15 minutes to figure it out. They have to actually say, I see a problem. This is what I need to do. So they need to have that capability to make a decision fast. So the picture of the fast, just give me a generation summary and a couple of trends, and that solves the problem, is gone. You have to give them a lot of things that they can think fast and decide. Uh, obviously, I left redundancy, high availability, and robustness, that's given. That haven't changed, and it's still there. The things that got added to it is security. We have NERCSIP, and we have hackers, and we have everybody that's trying to actually ransomware and so on, and guess what? On top of all of this, you still have to keep your software up to speed and current, and you cannot have it old, and your Windows, and your browser, and the Java, you have to keep all of these current. You cannot just have the luxury of says, I'll, I'll, I'll update it in, in six months. That won't work. Uh, you have to have accurate data and almost perfect modeling. We have to know that the model we have is matching reality because decisions are made on it. They no longer just operate the EMS or the grid by looking in the rear view mirror. We used to do that. We just look, things are okay. They never looked in the future, you just say, Ace is good, move, move forward. That concept is gone. You have to actually have tools that forecast what's going on before it happens and let you know, by the way, in two hours, you're gonna have a voltage problem here. And in an hour and a half to four hours, you're gonna have capacity shortage. And tomorrow at the peak, you don't have enough capacity and you have val uh, uh, voltage. So you have to know all these things. And if a unit trips, you have to run these contingency, 10,000 contingency again, to figure out what is my next and minus one. I have to know what to do next. And the operator needs that answer immediately. Cannot wait 15 minutes to get that answer. Um, multiple way to provide results. And with that, 19 seconds left. <laughs> Thank you. I think Thank you. Done. You're gonna Annie, you're not going to get away. I have oh, one question. All right. Go ahead. And it's kind of the best question. Maybe. All right. Um, the infrastructure bill, all this funding coming uh, as soon as it can kind of be written on checks and sent out to hopefully folks in this room. Yes. <laughs> from Kaiso's perspective and from your perspective in the kind of operation room, you know, I, I write and I talk all the time about, you know, the grid operators need to think about this and do that. From your perspective in 2022, with all this potential funding, and of course, all of the trends and key areas and issues you just touched on, what, what is Kaiso thinking about? What are you thinking about to get done in the extremely short near term, in the next year, with all this opportunity and all these huge challenges? That, that's, that's the toughest part. Um, last year, or actually this year, our focus was in making sure we have enough capacity and we don't shed load this summer. That was our biggest priority, because the summer before, we did shed a few hundred megawatts. So when you ask me what's my biggest, highest priority is not to shed any load next summer, and we shed load not because we made a mistake, it's because there is no uh, energy. Mm -hmm. um, but 
with all these funding and all these things, we're agnostic to technology. We really try to be advised. We're not profit, not for profit organization. We actually like you all to come out with the ideas. You can partner with us. You can come in and throw, say, hey, I'm, I'm trying this idea. If we like it, we'll partner with you. Remember, we, our job is to balance the grid <laughs> and reliability. And anything we say, we pass it back to the customers. So we have no specific incentive. But we want you all to find the best solutions, throw them at us, <laughs> and let's discuss if you want to do a pilot, if you want to discuss a possibility and so on. Uh, keep in mind, we're transmission and above. So when it comes to distribution, uh, we're, we have to work with the TOs that we have. But our focus is mainly what can we do to improve the grid in any shape or form. We do a study every year, and we do a lot of opportunity. There is a lot of partnering that happens and goes after the fund. And you have a better, uh, we have the best data. So if you said, I want to do some kind of a study or something to analyze, I have all, you know, 700 resources <laughs> for the VER. I can, I have the forecast for them. I have the accuracy. We can actually see this work and this doesn't work. Yeah, well, well, honey, and all of our speakers in the Prime Byte talks, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.